Right, so today we're looking at part seven of 34-year-old Mike and his 24-year-old Colombian fiance, Jimena. The pair had been in an online relationship for just over a year when Mike decided to go and visit Jimena in person for the first time. They got off to an awkward start with Mike only speaking English and Jimena only speaking Spanish, and things only got worse from there. She had also failed to tell Mike that she was unable to have kids, despite knowing that it was his dream to have them with her. And in return, Mike's gross habits, like constant burping, farting, and leaving dirty clothes everywhere, became a real issue for Jimena. Although he ended up proposing at the end of the trip, which Jimena said yes to, he came back to visit two months later and things got even worse. Jimena told Mike that she didn't want to marry him unless he paid for her to get cosmetic surgery. She told him that she was so repulsed by him that she didn't want to sleep in the same bed as him. And after a big argument involving Mike's friend Nelsie, who was there to translate, she told Mike that she wasn't going to be intimate with him until they got married. Sick of how he was being treated, Mike confronted Jimena over it. And in response, she acknowledged that her feelings had changed and broke up with him. That night, he turned up at her apartment, threatening to take back everything he had paid for, and after barging in, saying that he wouldn't leave because he was the one paying the rent, the pair had a massive argument that ended in tears for the both of them. As a result of his strange behaviour, Jimena refused to let Mike stay over on his final night in Colombia. And at the end of the goodbye phone call that Mike made from his hotel room, Jimena told him that she never wanted to see him ever again. Now it's finally time for the season finale tell-all episode. It's been six months since Mike left Columbia for the second time and a lot has changed. So now the host, Sean Robinson, wants to find out where exactly the pair stand in terms of their relationship. Um, we were able to work it out and today we're back together. Wow. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank Way you. Way to wow. go, Mike. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so they did get back together after the last episode. Apparently Mike going full incel wasn't enough for Jimena to be done with him. We'll get into why shortly after though, because this part was just the sort of introductory whip around to see where everyone was at, before going deeper into their relationships one at a time. With all the other cast members having seen the season's episodes, however, they didn't wait for it to be Mike and Jimena's turn before voicing their concerns about the relationship. I feel what you're doing because we all are love blind at some point. But dude, I can tell you, you know, with the men, I'm, everything was about her and not you. Yeah. Okay. My issue is her disgust, basically, on some of the things, you know, and I was just like, dude, you're gonna live with this man. He's gonna toot. He's gonna burp. Yeah. You're gonna have she to does be it used too. to it. Yeah. I think they have a valid point, and we've definitely discussed the fact that there were more issues bubbling up under the surface for Jimena, which probably made her react in a slightly more critical way of his obvious flaws. But again, let's not pretend that doing things like farting on top of your partner and not apologising, burping at the dinner table whilst other family members are present and not apologising, and leaving dirty clothes all over the house is normal behaviour just days into meeting someone in person for the first time. Like basic bodily functions can be excused, but criticism for a lack of manners and dirty habits is more than valid. Make sure that you're being treated yes. right. Yes. Because you're That's a good all man. I care about. You're supporting somebody for a whole year and then you say you're not in love with them. Why am I sending you money? Let me tell you, there's a tons of women in San Diego that asked me about you. You just call me. I think I'm definitely gonna have to defend Jimena today. I'm not sure who all these women that are chomping at the bit for a chance to get with Mike are, but I definitely agree with the point about being treated properly. Constantly picking up and dropping someone like Jimena did with Mike, changing her mind on them getting married and sleeping together, isn't fair on anyone. You could tell he was really struggling with it, and regardless of his own wrongdoings, that's very fair criticism too. Anyway, eventually, after looking at every other couple, they finally get on to Mike and Jimena. And Jimena, calling in from Colombia, gives a more detailed update on where exactly the relationship stands. But before we get to that, a quick message from today's sponsor, Raycon. Raycon have sent me these fantastic wireless earbuds, and I could not recommend them more. They look, feel, and sound absolutely amazing. I wear them pretty much every day to and from the gym and whilst I'm working out. And with 8 hours of playtime and 32 hours of battery life, that's more than enough for the journey time and the session. I actually cycle to the gym most days, and thanks to the optimised gel tips and intelligently designed shape, they stay on securely no matter what bumps I face on the road along the way. Plus, when I'm at the gym, I use the passive noise isolation to block outside sounds so I can focus on nothing but the music and the workout. And on the off chance someone wants to ask me something, awareness mode allows me to hear them loud and clear with my earbuds still in. 
Not only do they give you quality audio at half the price of other premium audio brands, you can now also click the link in the description or go to buyraycon.com forward slash Arthur TV for 15% off your next Raycon purchase. Huge thank you to Raycon for sponsoring today's video and for these amazing high quality earbuds. Now let's get back to the tell all where Jimena is just about to tell us where exactly the relationship stands. Vea, yo estoy, bueno, yo ahorita que estemos en Cartagena, pues voy a ver qué es lo que me haya cambiado y seguiremos juntos hasta que nos casemos. O sea, espero que le haya cambiado sus cosas malas y que él me diga lo que yo debo de cambiar. Porque yo no voy a decir que yo soy perfecta porque no lo es así. It's nice to see that she's willing to admit to having faults of her own because she didn't seem to acknowledge them much during Mike's second visit. But maybe she did and those parts just didn't air. I don't really know what she's expecting to gain from this next trip though. She's clearly not interested in him for how he looks or who he is as a person. So I'm not sure him being a little bit more hygienic is going to be enough to save this relationship. It'd be like having a rotten egg placed inside your home and having it tell you somehow that it was going to work on not smelling so bad. You'd be like, okay, great, that solves one of the key issues, but you're still a rotten egg. Like, there are still many other issues, and you don't really have any redeeming qualities. Plus, if she changes and gives him more of what he wants, which is essentially giving him more love and affection, is it going to be sustainable if it's not even genuine? I mean, she even admits that she still isn't in love with him. I believe Jimena has been very uh, toward Mike. The way... She has treated him. I have the impression that whatever reason she is with him is not love. No lo amo. Él lo sabe. Exacto. The fact that Jimena isn't in love with Mike is pretty much everyone's main concern. And the people who had the biggest issue with this were Mike's friends, John and Nelsie. They appeared several times throughout the season, and after starting off merely suspicious about the whole thing, they've really turned against Jimena since the big fight that Nelsie got involved in. And so the producers, knowing this, decided to bring them on to the tell-all. John and Nelsie are now going to join us to tell us how they feel about Mike and Jimena's relationship. Yes, I am all of you. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> she hates your friends. Probably because they know the truth, that's why. I don't think it's fair to say that it's just because they know the truth, because they won't be getting all of it, will they? Like we've said before, they're obviously going to be hearing a lot more of Mike's side of the story, and obviously they're going to side with him naturally because he's their friend. Don't get me wrong, I can see why they wouldn't approve of the relationship and why they wouldn't like Jimena, but she doesn't just dislike them because they think they've sussed her game plan. Like if I was dating a girl and her friends were constantly getting involved in our disagreements and constantly trying to get her to break up with me, I don't think I'd like them too much either. How do you see their relationship? Just the same way everybody sees it. She's just with him because of her money. He is buying her love. Or whatever it is. Not love, because this is not love. This is not the way. Um, <laughs> He's just buying her things. He's buying her attention. Companionship. You can clearly see it in, in her face when she's kissing him, when she's hugging him. That's not the kind of love. Yes. To be fair, none of that's really in dispute. Even Jimena is saying that that's the case. She just said herself that she isn't in love with Mike anymore. And Mike made it very clear in the last episode that he's aware of the fact that all he has to offer this relationship is financial benefits and the green card. That being said though, is anyone going to mention the fact that Mike might not really be in love with Jimena? I mean, he might feel very strongly about having a girlfriend and no longer being a lonely 34-year-old virgin, but has he actually got feelings for her based on who she is? A fair amount of the criticism being put forward here is valid, but it's very one-sided, isn't it? It's pretty much all being directed at Jimena, and Mike isn't even being held to the same standard. It seems to be a bit of a running theme in these tellers, doesn't it? There always seems to be one person that gets almost all of the flack, and their partner, who's often just as bad, if not worse, gets off scot-free. Even Sean as the host is guilty of it, and this time she jumps in to ask Jimena straight up if she's just in it for the money. Demasiado. Oh, God. Mike, you need to run. You went around your apartment and showed everything he bought for you. And then that last night, you couldn't even let him stay in the apartment that he pays for you? Damn. Mike, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You deserve so much better than that. 
Yeah, her saying that he helps her out in response to being asked if she's with him for the money doesn't really help her cause, does it? I think she needed to say something a little bit less transactional about why she's with him because that pretty much backs up what everyone else is saying. That being said, again, the whole thing about Mike deserving better is so one-sided. I mean, I would understand the whole letting him stay over thing if they had an amicable breakup, but he barged into her apartment mid-argument, refused to leave, stormed upstairs, called her stupid, and then sat himself on the kid's bed saying that he was gonna stay the night no matter what. Especially with her history of dating aggressive criminals, that kind of behavior would be terrifying. I wouldn't want him to stay either, and Jimena deserved better than that herself. But it seemed like there was no one there to argue her side and criticize Mike, so the scrutiny on her just got worse and worse as the teller went on. Jimena, you can't even tolerate his farts. And you being in the juntos, you almost Una semana, dos semanas. Sí, una semana, dos semanas tratando de vivir juntos y un año chapeándolo, un año cogiéndole todo su dinero. Sí, puede ser así como tú lo quieras decir. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? Oh my God. Oh no, she just like... admitted it. Wow. Oh wow. Yeah, she really isn't helping herself here. It's like she's trying to wind Elsie up. You know, I was quite critical of her manner at the start of this saga because it really did look like she was just using Mike for the money and the green card. But once that point had been made, I didn't really think that there was much value in constantly bringing it up. Now it's the talking point again, however, she has a real chance to show not just the other cast members, who let's be honest, won't be changing their minds either way, but also everyone watching that that's not the case. Maybe she just doesn't want to waste her time though, because it's so obvious how this whole thing is going to continue to go. ¿Por qué la persona piensa que tú estás en esta relación por dinero? Porque ustedes son los metidos. <laughs> y tú eres una chapeadora. Stop. Y sí. chao, se acaba. Exactly, dime, dime. because she hates talking to me because sí. I put her on the spot. To be fair, I agree, like she does have a lot to answer for, but she's calling in from another country and she's being ganged up on by the whole studio, the host and Mike's close friends, all in a language she can barely understand. And also, Mike is barely saying a word, he's just sulking in the corner like a coward. He said at the start that he was going to have to defend her today, but so far it's been like watching my nan try to defend a corner against Sergio Ramos and Cristiano Ronaldo. I know this kind of woman like Jimena, and she's not gonna stop until she completely destroys him, yep. and there is nothing left. left. Oh yeah, even she if right now, like he's gonna call her back when he gets to the hotel room, and he's gonna apologize for on our he, behalf. Yes. And just so you know, we are not apologizing. He really is that predictable, isn't he? He doesn't care that she agreed when someone accused her of bleeding him dry. He doesn't care that the entire room is telling him that the relationship is no good for him. And he doesn't care that she just admitted to everyone that she isn't even in love with him anymore. You just know that he's gonna go crawling back to her and tell her whatever he thinks she wants to hear. This Before is just... you got here, she even said she was gonna give me that second chance in- Second chance? Give you know. a what second is chance? What did you, you do wrong? I didn't second do anything chance. wrong, but... Second chance what? What does that mean? You gotta send her a direct deposit? I wanted to see what happens. We we'll see what will happen. I, she is the one that actually needs second chance. Can someone try to get her back, please? These relationships are always so fascinating to watch kind of in the same way that gory films are. The person who's benefiting from the money or the green card or whatever clearly doesn't want to be in the relationship, but they want what's being provided more than they want to leave. So they just end up putting up with it and suffering. And the person who only has the money or the green card to offer is always so in denial about the fact that the relationship isn't genuine that they never accept that it isn't. And so they cling on to their only escape from loneliness as long as possible. They always end up seeming to feel even lonelier in these types of relationships though, because they never feel truly loved and appreciated, and they often lose friends and family along the way. No sé por qué se meten en una relación de dos. Esto es una relación de una porque la una la persona que tú estás. Wait, what Shut up. Do not tell me to shut up. Then just leave. So then I leave. No, see, sit down. And good luck with her. Mike is actually a weirdo. It's so classic, isn't it? The awkward nerdy guy who never had a girlfriend isn't the nice guy he tried to make himself out to be. These incel types always have a lot of deep-rooted misogyny as well, don't they? To be fair, it's a small sample to draw from, but the only two people he's spoken to like this 
or been actively threatening towards have been women. You've got to wonder if spending the last decade with only men in the house and consuming objectifying content by himself in his room have given him a really warped view of women and how they should be treated. Or maybe he's just an angry controlling person regardless of who he's talking to. Either way, it's something they really should have focused quite heavily on in this tell-all. But the only time they even scratched the surface of the tip of the iceberg was when they were talking about the breakup earlier on. And even then, Sean barely touches on his behavior. Um, I felt really bad. But I did say some bad things that I wish I'd never said. And I meant to say I'm stupid. I didn't mean to call her stupid. Yeah, that really set her off. Yeah. <laughs> you guys had a terrible breakup. I mean, is that all you're gonna say? Everyone's gonna grill Jimena for the entire day and they're even gonna bring Mike's friends in to team up against her. But all they're gonna say in relation to his terrifying and degenerate behavior is the one time he called her stupid, it really set her off. And they let him get away with a clear lie as well. Jimena said in Spanish, this is stupid, and Mike clearly misunderstood her and called her stupid. He even tried to justify it to Jimena's sister by saying she called me stupid first, and he facepalmed when he realized what she had actually said. But what, they didn't want to scrutinize his claims. They couldn't pull that clip up and be like, well, you didn't mean to call yourself stupid, did you? Otherwise you would have agreed with what you originally thought Jimena said. It's like they didn't even care about balancing the criticism. They just continued to grill Jimena on what she was doing to Mike. Would you want a woman to do what you're doing to Mike, to your two sons? Would you want that? No, okay. So why do it to Mike? But you know what? He's got to learn this himself. I wish they didn't keep interrupting Jimena and actually let her finish. I mean, I'm guessing the answer was pretty obvious, but I'd love to hear from her why she wouldn't let someone do this to her sons. Like, she must know that it's not fair on Mike, so why is she happy to do it to him? Maybe the moral issues of what she's doing aren't bad enough to not make it worth putting food on the table for her family. But still, if she feels like she's taking advantage of him, you'd think she'd be more willing to make concessions. The main thing I really want is to really put in the effort to learn English. I'll help you. Lo he intentado, pero me parece difícil. Yo ayudo. <laughs> Bro, it's difficult for me to cry, but you're about to make me cry, I swear. Yes. <laughs> so. It's kind of crazy how with all of the relationship issues that we've witnessed that have been caused by her over the season, the one thing he would want to change would be the fact that she doesn't speak English. I mean, it's definitely important for them to be able to communicate better, but what about her changing and treating him better? What about her being honest about whatever's on her mind rather than bottling it up like she did with her fears that she was getting married too young? What about not using sex or marriage as leverage to get him to pay for things? Or what about not pressuring him at all into paying for luxuries that he doesn't feel comfortable paying for? Wake up. Let's go to the ER. Let's find your Dominican girl. <laughs> he has so much to offer. But she did say, you guys did hear it. She did say she's gonna try. Mike, yeah, and we fit. really hope she does. I think we're all here truly hoping it's that she will try, yeah? Yes. Yeah? That a miracle can happen and she can fall in love with you. I'm having a hard time reconciling this weird juxtaposition of Mike has so much to offer, it would be easy to find him another girl, and it would be a miracle if Jimena ever caught feelings for him. Maybe they're talking more about Jimena's mindset than what Mike has to offer, but I don't get all their hype around him. I'm not even just talking about his physical appearance. They all know what he's like as a person too, because they've just watched the same season we have. I'm convinced they must have watched a different editing cut because otherwise it just makes absolutely no sense to me. And weirdly, after that whimper of a final sentence, that was how the tell will ended. The final clip is after the show backstage when Mike video calls Jimena one on one. Amor, te quiero mucho. Trabajar muy duro en Cartagena en la relación. Sí. Sí. Voy a trabajar, me voy a ir a vivir contigo, me voy a casar y vamos a hacer todo para que yo no digan lo que no es. Sí. 
So they had all that criticism for Hermione using Mike for the money in the green card, which isn't entirely unreasonable, but no criticism for Mike using the fact that her family are in poverty to manipulate her with money. Nothing about him pretending he's her saviour and then throwing it back in her face when he got rejected. Nothing about him shaming her for being a cam girl despite being one of her customers. And nothing but a passing comment about his malicious and threatening behaviour during their breakup. It's actually quite infuriating. I wanted to see a room full of people tear into him like they do with Big Ed every season not just spend the entire time focused on Jimena. I know he's had plenty of criticism on the internet and I've thoroughly enjoyed a lot of your comments over this saga, but I really wanted to finish it off by seeing him get served some home truths to his menacing little face. Well, after the tell-all, it seems Mike did go to visit her in Cartagena. However, it can't have gone particularly well because around the same time, she posted and then quickly deleted a TikTok video of her on a video call with a Canadian guy called Josh Romeo, captioned, I fell in love with your smile. To add to the spiciness of the situation, according to someone who claims to be a friend of Josh's, apparently Mike and Josh had hotel rooms next to each other in the hotel they were staying at in Cartagena. And apparently there, Jimena got caught sleeping with both of them. To make matters even worse, Josh had apparently been in a four year engagement up until this point, and unsurprisingly, his fiance left him as a result. A few days later, Jimena showed off a new tattoo on her wrist, covering up the one she had of Mike's name, and the day after that, the pair officially broke up once and for all. Around a month after that, Jimena then shared a photo of her finger with an engagement ring on it, captioned, thank you my love, I love you. According to reports, Josh was in Colombia with her at the time, and they were filming the next season of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 Days together. What makes the whole thing slightly more confusing, however, is that Jimena has a new boyfriend called Brian, who is all over her Instagram, and she actually started spending time with him four months before Josh even entered the picture. Whether there was any romantic overlap or the two men knew about each other, your guess is as good as mine. Plus, given both men were rumoured to have been seeing Jimena at the time, and given Jimena hasn't spoken about the engagement again since the post, it's unknown which of them actually gave her the ring, or if they're actually still engaged. There was also a fair amount of drama more recently, when Jimena posted a picture of an ultrasound to Instagram, captioned five months. This led to speculation that she was pregnant, and that she had lied to Mike about having her tubes tied and burned, as an excuse to not have kids with him. However, she quickly deleted the post and put up another one captioned, my friend, congratulations on your baby. And so now most people think the original post was just for attention or just as a joke at the expense of her followers. Also, if you're not already, please feel free to follow me on Instagram as well. Anyway, Jimena now is frequently posting about her life with Brian and her two kids on Instagram, whilst Mike has returned to New York and has yet to reveal any new romantic interests in his life, with the majority of his feed being pictures of food, motorcycles, sports and memes. However, Mike hasn't exactly stayed out of trouble himself, as fans have been calling for him to not be allowed on any further 90 Day Productions due to a controversial Instagram post that resurfaced from his old account. But so far, the show have yet to release a statement about it. Although their story seems over now, if rumours are to be believed, they're both going to be on the next season of 90 Day Fiancé before the 90 Days together. So, if you want to keep up with the next stage of this saga when it's out, along with a whole load of other 90 Day Fiancé videos and more, please feel free to subscribe down below so you can catch those videos as soon as they're out. Thank you for watching and hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.